Welcome, Laura McGuinness, to my car today, my little studio. Is I like love it. it. Thank you so much for and having me. You're so, so welcome. And I think this is going to be another wee episode of This Is Your Life, because I don't actually <laughs> know that much about you. But most people will know you as the um, founder and business owner of the Glasgow Girls Club, and there's a GGC business yes as well separate yep. to the yes yep. so that's yours so that's it so the Glasgow Girls Club and it's a total mouthful so it's like I just always go GGC <laughs> it's so much easier um that started life as a free community um so that's a free group on Facebook and it's still going today so it started life back in July 2016 and now we've got just under 37 women all women from Glasgow and actually way further afield as well. It's not just kind of Glasgow women in there. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how the, the, the brand came to be. Yes. Um, the business club came later. That that was part of the membership. That's kind of how I turned it from being like a real passion project into being a business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I can relate to that. We've just been <laughs> talking about that. So predominantly, because I've been in the Glasgow Girls Club and most women in Glasgow will know about it. Um, for years, like yeah. years, I must have been one of the <laughs> okay. uh, one of the first one people. Of the <laughs> um, so, if you don't know about it, it is on Facebook. It's a brilliant community. You can pretty much post anything about it, or anything you like on it. Any questions? I'm going to talk to you about that. Yeah. How it's changed, okay, so much over the years. Yes. Um, and uh, you'll relate to that. Um, but it's an amazing community um, on Facebook for anything for women, and you do really well at. Um, managing any sort of negative comments which again is incredible but a hard job so I will come okay. to that point and ask Brilliant. you about that but let's start off with you where <laughs> you're from how it all evolved and how you got into the Glasgow setting up the wee community Facebook page because that's what it was but you have Absolutely. got a background in marketing yes. I know that much I, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I do have a background in marketing so when I um left school I didn't have a scooby do what I wanted to do like like probably most people let's face it unless you've got like a burning desire for a profession I had not a job so I wanted to go to uni because I wanted to party more I thought that will buy me more party credits <laughs> if I party time. just party time <laughs> when I actually went to uni I was 17 so I like one of my best memories of uni which is probably the wrong type of memory was going into the student union and getting told every time because I was in there every day like Laura we're watching you like you're not allowed to drink like literally you're not allowed to drink everyone's going to be IDing you and I would be like crawling out that place <laughs> Were you under 18? Like, at the time, was that what you're saying? All right, okay, we're not saying that at all, okay? Um, but yeah, so I loved university, like, um, loved it for the meet new people, meet new uh, cultures, and obviously learning. Learning's a big thing for me. Learning for me is something that I try to do frequently in my life because I feel like it keeps a lot of things at bay for me, like this idea of imposter syndrome and, and various different things. If I'm constantly learning, that's a big tool for me. Um, so went to university, did business and management and marketing, left there uh, and went to do a, a, dipl no, a diploma, like a short term working experience at the Glasgow City Marketing Bureau. So I have always been really patriotic anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always loved Glasgow. Like I just always loved it, loved the people, loved the place. Um, and when I went to the marketing bureau, I kind of loved it even more. Uh, they offered me a job, but I, I took a job through in Edinburgh where I worked for six years and I did the commute some of the time and some of the time I lived with my cousin who um, lives through there. So I kind of got the best of both Glasgow and Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. So I, lo I love both cities. Mm -hmm. I think they yeah. both get so me much too. going for mm -hmm. Scotland. So again, that was brilliant. I uh, worked in a marketing agency through there. Visit Scotland were one of our biggest clients. So... Um, I, again, just got to like get to know the country more, get to know the place that I lived, loved it. Uh, and then I then moved because the, the Edinburgh-Glasgow commute started to kind of take its toll. So when I was living at home with my parents, it was a two-hour commute each way. Uh, when I lived in Partick, uh, then that got shorter. And then I moved to Cumbernauld uh, with my now husband and it got even shorter. But even at that, I was finding that I was spending so much time traveling I was trying to up level my time but it was taking a lot of time out of my life so I thought mm -hmm. right let's try and get a job in Glasgow and see how we get on and that's where I started working at Fake Bake 
-hmm. in the mm -hmm. warehouse in Cumbernauld where I met some amazing people like Victoria yeah, Halliday, mm -hmm. our good friend, and got some great experience there of marketing from a like a client perspective. And whilst I was there, I started the Glasgow Girls Club Facebook group. Mm -hmm. And I had always wanted to create a forum for women. I loved see when the, the World Wide Web first came out and I would always go in the chat rooms and I would chat to not just women, I would chat to everybody from around the globe, get mm -hmm. to know new people, new cultures. And I just loved it. I was like, this is amazing, like that you can actually connect with people who you would never connect with on a day-to-day -day basis but what I didn't like was the kind of rude stuff that you would get through from guys um I say largely guys they appeared as guys in their mm -hmm. profiles mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. uh, and I thought to myself that's there was an element of it that was therefore unsafe and I thought to myself if I ever do start a forum a chat room for women it will be women women mm -hmm. self-identifying mm -hmm. women all women um but that was kind of one of my major driving forces to make it an all-female platform because of some experience that I've had when I was younger in the chat rooms and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, bringing Glasgow women together to learn about the city, really, I mean, I had no... That's what it was. Yeah, that's, that's what it was. Aye. I had no intention of making a business from it. It was um, a supportive platform for local business, still is. Uh, and it was just about, you know, women share what's going on with your life. It could be anything from periods to relationships to work to children, anything that's mm -hmm. going on. Uh, and there was, there's you know, there's always a lot of support in the community. So that's um, where it was. And then I, I think as we all get older, you discover a lot about yourself, don't you? And I started to, to discover that, you know, well, when I was working through in Edinburgh and when I was working at Fake Bake, working in these roles kind of sometimes heightened my anxiety. I make no secret of the fact that I'm a person that, like, kind of lives with anxiety. Mm -hmm. or I was going I, to I've got, that, I've got tools mm -hmm. and stuff, so it's not the way it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, however, what I realised about myself was when I've got a boss, I'm also a people pleaser. So I would work myself into into the ground and in, at no fault of my bosses because they when you are that person you're doing it to yourself mm -hmm. only you can put those boundaries up mm -hmm. and the balance for working life but it just got to the point where my husband Lee was like if you're going to work this hard do it for yourself and I thought to myself do you know what the man's got a point and also uh, the GGC Facebook group had grown to maybe about 6,000 women at this point so I was mm -hmm. like there's something in this like there's mm -hmm. women are enjoying this friendships were being formed so I thought if I can create firstly a social club with events and I had a wee rose gold key ring that you would take around Glasgow yeah, and get deals that. for yeah, do you um, still have that? so I've no. still I've still got that as a gift with purchase for yearly subscriptions right. but now we've got an app because right. what I was finding is obviously when you've got a key ring and you can go in around places, if you cancelled your membership, you're going to still use that key ring. <laughs> right. I, quite right. Sure. And also I had no analytical information. So I didn't know if somebody was using their, so NAF's one of mm -hmm. our partners. I didn't know how many times people were really using their their key ring. They were able to say, oh, you know, but some, some businesses, especially hospitality, they won't write down GGC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I needed a wee bit more analytical mm -hmm. information for the business mm -hmm. as well. But whilst I was building that social club and what was going to be in it, I realised I'd never been a business owner before. And actually, it's hard. It's lonely. It's, you know, you're maybe used to it. Because I was a manager in my roles and I always had teams around me. And then all of a sudden I was on my own with my dog. <laughs> and I was like saying to my dog, Haggis, is this a good idea? And she would be like, shut it and get me food more. So really, like I had all these pain points. And I thought if I put that into a business club membership, hopefully that'll help other women in business who are maybe dreaming of starting a business or to just get the support that I never had that mm -hmm. would have maybe projected my business on more had I had all the the expertise and the, the support for me it's about community and i think it's that's really important for humans to be part of a community so that's what i hope i've created with the business is the social community and the business community for women mm -hmm. to grow and glow yes. is our mantra <laughs> good i like it 
Um, so you basically set it up as a just a Facebook group page. That was what you set it up as. Yep. And it was wordy mouth, yep. wasn't it, that um, allowed it to grow and blossom the way that it did. So what point did you, did you take the leap of faith and go, <laughs> right, I'm going to jack my job and I'm going to hit this full? Were you already getting an income from it? Was it already justifiable or did you take that leap of faith? It was... To be honest, it was more the leap of faith, although I did start having a wee bit of a business mindset with it. So basically what I started doing was, so this was, I left Fake Bake in December 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Facebook group by that point had maybe been going for about a year and a half. What I'd been doing in advance of leaving Facebook is I'd been doing the odd wee event here and there. Mm -hmm. So I did a pop-up shop um back like the year before and then because there was so many business owners in the group I thought networking would be really great but because I was when I first started in business really shit scared of networking because actually it is it can be you know a completely overwhelming situation to go into a group of people and be like mm -hmm. ah, yeah, yeah that's what I do mm -hmm. so I thought to myself what if we did like speed dating but speed networking so you're just forced to speak to people there's no awkward hi there's there's like you've got five minutes talk and then you move on so i thought that would really really help me so that's the format that we did it and we would have an expert speaker at the start and then that helped me kind of grow this idea of the ggc as a business because people would buy their tickets to come and then um it also let let me start chatting about the membership and what would you like in it as a business owner and try and collect some data from people as i met them uh, and then at the end of 2018, it wasn't at a point where like I could have supported myself. Uh, um, we had to do a bit of investing from, from Lee and I into the business. However, which was very, very lucky. And like I know that that's not everybody's situation. Uh, but yeah, I, I just kind of said to myself, I was burning myself out. Because mm -hmm. I was doing, I was trying to do the people pleasing and just doing my job as good as I possibly can. But then I was also like, but this is like my baby. Because mm -hmm. your business mm -hmm. is like a baby. Ah. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you care for it and you nurture it and you're protective over it. So I found that quite a struggle. And I think with all business owners, there's always a point where you have to be like, if you can, you have to be like, right, this needs to be my full focus now. Mm -hmm. If I'm really going to go for it. And I speak to lots of my members and they're kind of, they're maybe at that point or they're, and it's, it's a scary time. But it's like, right, how can we, what can we do? to, to yeah. maximise on it. I think if you're committed to it, and again, we've talked about this, it's all you're doing is turning that commitment into a wee bit of financial gain for you as a job, if you like. That's how I see it. Because nothing changes. You're still totally committed. Yeah. You're just taking a different view as to how you manage it. But also for you, I mean, I jacked my full-time job long ago, so I never had that issue doing yeah. this. But for you, that was a real you know, question, a real yep. risk, if yeah. you like, um, yeah. that you took. Yep. But I think from what you're saying, because of the commitment that you had anyway, it was, it was, you know, and the experience that you already had. It wasn't like you just got up one day and went, right, I'm going to chuck my job <laughs> and start a no, Facebook page, didn't no, you? No, you know, there was, there was build up. Uh, Absolutely, there was build up. So that's the start yet. So see, like, we'll talk about the anxiety just now then. I yep. do want to come back to the Glasgow Girls Club because it has, it has evolved and changed so much just in the time. And I think I actually joined it when or just before you left your job. Okay. And that is when I joined it because I wow, remember okay. you doing a live and talking about oh, it. Oh, that live. <laughs> I, I, I still, I still, still have gives you the I still have palpitate. That right. was my first ever live and it was, I sat all day, all oh, day. Oh, can going, I imagine? Hit record, Laura. Hit record. Aye. All day. And I was like, Laura, Lee's going to come home from work soon. And He's going so to make done. the dog start barking. <laughs> what are you doing? And honestly, Aye. all day. I totally relate to that because <laughs> I couldn't even speak on my stories until three years ago, past in August until I had hypnotherapy. So I can totally relate to that. I would have been the same. Absolutely. And I think that's what drew me into it though. Okay. It's the fact that this girl has set up this page and she's now going to pack in her job. <laughs> to, I mean, it was quite okay. a, it was a, an amazing achievement. It oh, was quite a you. wall 
moment okay, I'm going to okay, elevate okay. I do remember thinking that I'm going to talk about a new post that I posted once that was dead funny in it as well just to give people an example <laughs> of how like just varied and amazing oh, yeah. the page is <laughs> but um, the anxiety thing so as you've just said there even pressing the button at that moment when you'd you know, changed from working for an employer uh-huh. to working for yourself was a big deal for you. So the whole anxiety thing and living with that and how did you get to a point where you are now that you can manage it and what was it like? Just tell us your whole anxiety story. I'm My sure anxiety I'll, I'll journey. Have more questions no, absolutely. Well I was always a wee girl who was classed as a worrier. Mm-hmm. So you know back in like back when I was young, anxiety it wasn't there was, it wasn't banded about as maybe yeah, much it wasn't, wasn't a word it wasn't really a word mm-hmm. um, and yeah I was always a worrier so I would look for worries so see, mm-hmm. if, see if my life was going smoothly and, and obviously I was a young girl so it naturally I was in a lucky you know family situation that it was going smoothly uh, but I would look for worries and then I would stack worries on top of worries mm-hmm. and sometimes I would wake up in the morning and I would be like Oh, a new day and then I would just it would be almost like a wee just darkness would come over and I'd be like but what if that happens today what if you do that wrong my worries were generally based on me like upsetting somebody or making somebody else feel not good I, I would mm-hmm. always be like oh what, what that was my fault and, and take the weight of the world on my shoulders so my mum was always just like you know like stop worrying about things stop looking for worries and but then at the same respect, my mum is very similar to me. I take after my mum in a lot of respects. And, you know, she's got a, one of a, our favourite sayings is, you don't have to wait long for a worry. So as much as she's always been really, you know, like, stop it, that's silly. Like, she equally is like that herself because something will come along and it'll be a worry. So recognise that in myself as a wee girl. And then as an adult, situational anxiety is something that we all get as, you know, we all get... We all get, um, like, say if you're driving along in a car and a car comes towards you, it's that that pan, yeah. that immediate, mm-hmm. and that can keep you safe. So Aye, fight or flight. Fight or flight. Mm-hmm. Not all anxiety is bad for you, but for me it was more like a kind of generalised anxiety where I was worry stacking to the point of it actually making me quite unhappy. Um, and I, I didn't even know what it was, like, for a long time. I just had it in my mind, I'm just a worrier. That's just who I am. Um, but I think actually going into business has really helped me actually because I have to put myself outside my comfort zone all the time and I have to I have to take on the anxiety head on and just give myself the tools like you mentioned. So for me, if I'm waking up in the morning and I'm thinking, why do I feel like this? Like something bad's going to happen today, just that. Then I have to like say to myself, right, breathing for me I know it's so simple and I know like people might be like that can't be one of the maybe some people might think that can't be an only tool for you but actually breathing for me fundamentally is my top a, tool mm-hmm. I went to a brilliant <clears throat> class with a mm-hmm. um, a business called Performance Breathworks mm-hmm. he, taught, he taught these breathworks which were brilliant and actually things like different box breathing like you can breathe in for five, push out for five. Like you can do different things to bring your heart up and down. I don't want to obviously share the skills in case I, I say it wrong because actually there'll be lots of tutorials mm-hmm. with professionals that will get it right. But from my memory, I try and do what he says. Getting out in nature for me, fundamentally, anything next to water. So if I'm having a day where I'm just like, things are going wrong, like I'm like, right, go to either a lock, a barn, a river, the sea, or if you can't do that, just go out and be in nature. Because I think sometimes when you're out in nature, and I think the sea is really good for this, you realise how small you are in the world mm-hmm. and how expansive the world is. And it almost makes your worries and fears smaller and smaller and smaller. Puts it into perspective. Puts it into perspective. And I think that sometimes that can be a lot about maybe what you need to kind of jolt yourself out of it. I do believe, though, that if you, you know... If you are a, a, a sufferer from it, of anxiety, there is maybe past traumas in your childhood, um, and it can be lots of different things. Mm-hmm. But when we are children, we're we're developing, and it's like a key time for our brains. 
So when we are developing as children, if there's maybe something, it, it can be, obviously trauma comes in all forms. As we know, unfortunately, it can be really super horrific mm -hmm. or it can be something that's maybe, when you think back, you think that that wasn't really a big deal, but actually at the time as a child, it maybe gave you anxiety, mm -hmm. you know, whether it was separation anxiety or what it was. So I do think a lot of what I've come to realise about myself has been a lot of deep diving. Mm -hmm. I think looking back into my past memories, trying to work out, you, did that affect me more than it did? And just kind of sitting and, with it. Aye, and you know, there's a lot of, what is the word, um, views around childhood anxiety and whatever. And I don't think society really appreciates how small these things might be in comparison to how a child receives it and then processes it and then grows up with it and lives yep. with it and, you know, looks back and reflects and realises that really affected me. And yep. you don't, the reason I say that is it's not childhood anxiety and childhood trauma isn't directly linked to the family or family issues because that's the, the worry. I think people think if they say that, oh, people will then think oh I didn't have a good family life or whatever it's yep. not you can be bullied at school yep. and that can have a massive impact on how you then respond the rest of your life yeah so do you have you identified things in your childhood that did affect you yeah I've, I've identified things in like my childhood and kind of teenage years which when I think back did largely affect me but I don't think I think there's probably I think there's probably even more still work that I could probably right. do on myself. Uh -huh. I think sometimes people shy away from looking back because it maybe doesn't make them feel great. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes when you are looking into yourself and just trying to like work out who you are as a person, which I think is a really great thing to do is like look back in your life and look at all the kind of key moments or moments that you maybe didn't think were key but actually have affected you. Mm -hmm. I think it's powerful to do that, but I think you could always be doing work in yourself. Yeah, you can always God, be I, yeah. I know that I personally do need to always yeah. do work in myself. I always say I couldn't function daily. If no. I didn't I just wouldn't even be able to leave the, the house. Absolutely. If I wasn't working on myself I'm quite open about that. Is there all oh, those keys are in there Laura get them out of there so you can get your coffee <laughs> in. Worry, um I, would you share specifics or would you just always generalise? Because I'm just wondering if there's anything specific that's affected you that maybe people could relate to and realise, oh, wait a minute, you know, I'm no, and it's no insignificant or it is a thing or whatever. Or would you just I think, general? I think for me, like, because, because I, I've been lucky in my life to not have any severe trauma, and I mm -hmm. speak to women every day in that club that go through things that I just think... I can't you like I think they're super women that they're mm -hmm. still continuing on. My my I've never had any like key moments where it's been like really, really horrific for me, which is which is lucky. But things like yeah, things at school, um the wee things. I think sometimes the wee things, maybe getting told something that you maybe thought you were good at something and then someone's like, You're rubbish at that. And it seems really small, mm -hmm. but that then kind of, I feel like you can maybe hold on to that and that can maybe affect things like, for me, public speaking was a big thing. So if you're told at school by a teacher or by a fellow pupil or whatever, oh, your chat, your speech was crap or something which, mm -hmm. which is really, and it's just kid, what kids mm -hmm. say, you know, mm -hmm. or what, mm -hmm. you know, or if a, if a teacher maybe is, is like, you know, you're, that's maybe not your strength. Or, or, or something, and, and like maybe a way that they, a teacher maybe but would. You know, that's all changed as well. It has like all changed. Because now, know. just saying what you think is, you know, you, whereas before, public, public speaking, that was a big thing for me. But that was because society had created this, you've got to be a certain way yeah. to be a public speaker. But yep. now, thanks to probably social media and yes. the name, that people don't want that. People actually want real life whatever it is for you real and authentic it, aye, it doesn't need to be polished. a presentation on powerpoint and you know you know all that sort of stuff it just doesn't need to be that yeah i totally relate to it yeah but was that so how did you overcome that with the public speaking did oh, you the public speaking that was a tough that was a toughie for me yeah uh, because i 
obviously I was doing the networking events and I uh, had to speak at every event. I had to stand up and speak in front of everyone. And I, I felt sick. Like I would be going to these events that I had created. So I was like, why have you done this? Um, phoning my mum and being like, I can't do this. I'm going to, I'm going to flop. I'm going to forget what I need to say. And my mum was like, Laura, like, if you if you forget what you need to say, don't worry about it. Like, you, you've add got lib. add lib. Like, just <laughs> just say the next thing that comes to your mind. Don't be so rigid about it that you're worrying about. But I would feel sick, and I would might be shaking, and I'd be hoping that nobody would see my handshake and just all the usual things that public speaking can bring on in your body. Mm -hmm. So for me, signs of anxiety for me show in my body. So mm -hmm. uh, I get a sore throat all the time if I'm anxious about something. So even before my mind maybe even realises that I'm feeling nervous or anxious, I get a sore throat. And then I'm like, oh, it kind of does make sense because I'm mm -hmm. really worried about this thing, mm -hmm. but I'm blocking it, I'm numbing mm -hmm. myself. Um, Have you done it so much now I've that you so can much. do it no problem? That's the answer. Uh, and you go like, I know, and you go live and whatever. It's the same as this. I started off really nervous and now it's just like, yep. you just you do it, it's true what, what people say. If you can push yourself out your comfort zone, the more and more you do it, you're thinking, I need to, I need to find a new a new place to push myself. Do you yeah, know what I mean? It's so it's true. Like, comfort zone. Aye, it's, yeah, it's just doing it. It's just aye. pushing yourself. You grow by pushing yourself out your comfort zone. And I'm not judging anybody that loves their comfort zone because comfort zone is comfy. Yeah. Aye, That's exactly. why it's called comfort it's zone. It's happy and no stress. It's happy, no stress, <laughs> no challenges. And life can life can roll along like that. Really lovely if that's, mm -hmm. if that's what you mm -hmm. want. Uh -huh. um, but for me personally, I know my how I need to grow as a person and that's pushing myself outside mm -hmm. my comfort zone. Yeah, no, totally relate to that. Although in saying that, I'm doing the Brayhead Wedding Exhibition to thousands of women chatting on the catwalk oh, and I'm you? shitting myself Are you presenting that. it? I'm presenting it. Oh, that's that. amazing. I think I saw you posting about that actually. In fact, I'm sure I commented. Uh, that's incredible. So that's... that, I'm ne so I'm like, aye, that's going to be aye. out in nature, see. breathing. <laughs> <laughs> lots of lots the sea. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally understand that. Um, what was I going to say about that? The getting out. Oh, it just, just went out my mind. I was going to ask you something about that. But see, so talking about the group then. Yes. Um, so it's it evolved quite quickly, really. After that, it grew and grew, and you know, it's at just under forty thousand now. Is yeah, that right? Yeah, on yeah. Facebook, and you're also on Instagram. Yeah. Um, so how has that changed? And like, what challenges have you been up against and you've had to come across, you know, deal with it, with anxiety as well? Because yep. that's a thing. I don't think people really appreciate that either. Yep. When you've created a platform, you're not just actually dealing with your own issues, which are massive. Yep. You're dealing with everything else that comes with having this <clears throat> platform. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a really, really good point as well, because I think sometimes when people are in Facebook groups, they maybe don't appreciate, and it's it's no slight on them, but they maybe don't appreciate the amount of work that goes on behind the scenes because it is just, you know, it's a free community and people hopefully get a lot from it and they're maybe not thinking that somebody's deliberating over posts for hours or, or you're doing mm -hmm. stuff in the back end. So uh, it is, every day is, every day is interesting with moderating the GGC mm -hmm. Facebook group. You've got so, people that help you with that. Thank now. goodness, yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I have got... Um, Claire Bailey, mm -hmm. eh, who is who's my she's my VA, so she uh, does she's the GGC community membership coordinator. Assistant. She's that brilliant mm -hmm. virtual assistant. Eh, so she helps me, and my cousin Andrina also helps me. And we've got like a nice we've got a WhatsApp group. We're all very different women, so we all bring different kind of opinions or thoughts on certain posts. So as I've mentioned, I'm a people pleaser. I don't like declining posts, and however there's sometimes there is merit for declining posts so with it being such a large community we need to really consider the safety of the collective so if we approve posts um that are too super dark and heavy so things relating to suicides maybe if someone's feeling suicidal we we can't approve posts like that because it's almost like the hive mind so I've spoke to doctors about this I've spoke to social workers I've spoke to lawyers I've spoke to probably every professional body about the content that goes into that group to try and make sure it's safe for the whole so 
you know, you could have somebody who's having a really low mental health day <clears throat> and then they see somebody posting about feeling suicidal. That is not going to do them any favours. That might put thoughts in their own mind. We, we, we can't have, we just can't have that. So we've got processes in place whereby we message the person direct we send them resources, you know, places like Chris's house. Um, mm -hmm. We've got a list of resources, uh, and we'll send people based on what they're what they're um, potentially talking about in their post. And saying that we don't triggering content isn't always declined because mm -hmm. we all live with triggers in our life, and you know, there's there's uh, things that humans go through which I think there's real merit to be chatted about and and talked about in the group. You know, anxiety does feature a lot. Um, mental health is a big one. Yeah. And I would say, and that's what I was meaning about changes in the the group page, it's very much changed with the mental health. And it's no, and it's nothing to do with, like, you monitoring it. It's what people are putting into it. It's yeah. what people want to talk about now. Yeah. And I've noticed a massive difference in people coming on and saying things like, I'm really struggling, and not to the extent that you're saying about yeah, suicide. Yeah. It's only you saying that that I thought, all right, enough. There hasn't yeah, been anything no, about we that. Deal with but, that ourselves. Yes, and yep. I think I would agree with that. I think that is the right thing to do, um, so long as that person's getting support, which is which is ultimately what they're looking for. What they're for. looking for, absolutely. So, um, I do see a lot of posts now where it is more and more so people are struggling with finances or relationships is a massive one just yeah. now yeah um and stuff like that so it's become very much a community of support yeah. whereas when i think about it back in the day it was there was more business orientated posts i think but yeah you, but you managed that as well yeah just changed that to just yeah we month. changed that so basically our so back when i first started it it was a it wasn't the group wasn't on post approval and post approval means that the admin approves all the posts that go in so the group was just anyone was posting any time and what i was doing was laterally going in and being like what oh, that's not a good post for the group like mm -hmm. um however now it is post approval and basically what i was finding uh, with the group is that my business membership because the group was getting so big and i pay my admin to help me monitor it and moderate it the business had to grow to help me feed the beast, yeah. which is the GGC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and there was at one point, it was getting to the point where I was like, I, you know, I need to be putting more money into this. So I need this to grow. So basically what I did was I changed the rules and I said that if you're going to do any standalone advertising posts in the group, you have to be a business member. Um, so they get approved on a Monday, Tuesday and business members have got the opportunity to promote their business to 37,000 women. But that's not to say that I silenced the people who the membership was potentially inaccessible for, because that's not how the community was formed. So for the people that potentially the membership's not for them or it's not accessible, we do a Thursday event thread where everybody can shout about events they're doing. Mm -hmm. We do a Friday event thread where everyone can list their business under the thread. And I wholeheartedly encourage business recommendations. And that doesn't need to be a GGC business member. That can be, I got my hair done in this amazing place and I want mm -hmm. to shout it out. Mm -hmm. And because I mm -hmm. think that's a lovely thing to do. And I'm not here to police that. Like yeah. that's, that's, a, that's a nice thing. And mm -hmm. when somebody posts, I'm looking for, um, you know, somebody who can give me a hot wax today. Is anyone available? All these people that comment underneath, I'm not going and monitoring if they're business members mm -hmm. or not, mm -hmm. because that for me is just... It, dispute, it defeats the community purpose. It's the community. Uh, so mm -hmm. I've always got to have the community mind and the business mind, and that's hopefully a good marry up. But what you said about, yeah, the, the, the content shifts, mm -hmm. the content shifts with what's going on in the and outside I, world. And, which and, is, and it's flexible for that. You don't have rules. I no. know, and that's, that's what I like about it. It's yeah. moving with the times. Moving with like the times. Like things should in society and changing and everything. You yeah, know, I, I, I do. That's one of the things I like about oh, it. Oh, no, I think um, that's good. Because it matters. It's relevant. People need things to be relevant. People need to talk as yeah. well, don't they? And, and yeah, and largely, like, most stuff goes in, gets approved, um, mm -hmm. but the, the, the kind of deeper stuff that I mentioned, we try and deal with, 
but as you mentioned from somebody that does deal with anxiety herself that's why it's great for me to have Claire and Jeannie to help because I can take on a lot of people's um a wee bit em empathic mm -hmm. so, and you're absorbing the energy of the message yeah so, you'd be you wouldn't be human yeah, if you didn't yeah. but some of us are, some of us are a bit more <laughs> some some people can than, some people are much better um, at managing a barrier to protect yeah. themselves mm -hmm. and i do think there's real people you know if you're dealing with people that have trauma or anything you, you do have to have a wee bit of a barrier yourself or else you take on that yourself mm -hmm. so i'm still mm -hmm. working on that yeah. So that is something that I do find a wee bit tricky sometimes. Yeah. I do too, doing yep. this. I, I struggle not to absorb the situation. Because you, you speak to some amazing people, but a lot of people that have been through hard Aye, and it's not, and it's, for me, I do just sit with it until it passes. And sometimes it can be a good few days. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's being able to let those few days happen yep. and then get yourself back on track to keep going it's always about keep going for me just keep going for the greater good you know fight the good fight keep fighting it and you do it um, so well i have but, to say well, i don't feel like that but, but that's what i'm always telling myself so see um and i think it's really important that we emphasize this for anybody that wants to join the group because it's free and why would you not be part of such an amazing community there's you're one of the very few groups and you know any sort of community that i'm aware of that manages the trolling that's what it is really really well yeah and um, so i think we it's important to say that because people need to know that they can put a post on that they might feel embarrassed about or whatever you know um and know that there is no room for trolling at all so tell us no. how you manage that <laughs> <laughs> i know you're, you're right uh, that's one of our things is we want it's the community to feel thing. like a safe Aye. space mm -hmm. it needs to feel safe and it's amazing and we've got things like anonymous posting which um enables women to say things that they they wouldn't say if, if they couldn't say it anonymously uh, so that's that's another plus but the trolling thing we have got like a zero tolerance policy so if somebody says something if, if somebody's abusive they're out they're blocked yeah. they can't even find the group oh, do again you, right do you do that oh, just is it a straight block for 100 percent straight block for nobody abuse. gets a chance no it, it, like so when i say that like there's disagreements that happen and confrontation that happens which we we remove because we don't want confrontation because yeah. confrontation breeds confrontation mm -hmm. so, so people it start does. fighting mm -hmm. we remove it but that doesn't automatically mean we remove them because th everyone's got their own opinion and 30, mm -hmm. there's probably 36,000 different opinions in that group. So that's like, that's okay. But we're talking about if somebody has, is like actually abusive, racist, any of those types of... Uh -huh. I hate th there's just no, not... No, there's no room for hate mm -hmm. in the group. And, and I, I, maybe back at the beginning, was slightly more lenient with stuff. But if there's an offender, the offender always repeats. Mm -hmm. So for us, we're just like... And actually, we don't have a lot of time. Like, you know, it's a, it's a massive undertaking thing in the group. And if you are going to call somebody a really horrible name or something, then we mm -hmm. don't have the time to then monitor your behaviour. It's just like, don't do it. Don't mm -hmm. do it, you're out. Mm -hmm. um, so there are, there are different levels. We, we like to be fair. Um, you know, like things like disagreement and arguing and stuff, that's, that's kind of real life, but we take it out of the group. Mm -hmm. What I've had to stop doing is stop looking at my message request box because if we remove somebody from the group and it's really rare like mm -hmm. i want to say uh, like yeah yeah do you know what no, i know but trolling online just now is a bit of a trend so that's why i thought it's really important oh, to say that yeah. because it is a thing now where if you're putting yourself out there whilst i totally disagree with it more than anything it's like you've got to accept that you're going to get that. You get different so, opinions. Yeah, yep. and, but I just feel for your group, it's a massive thing because yeah. nowhere else does it. Oh, we just, yeah, it is a zero tolerance policy. And from my perspective, I stop looking at the message request box. So I probably miss a lot of opportunities. I probably miss a lot of potentially really nice comments because I have to block out the negativity mm -hmm. because I know... It doesn't serve me to look through yeah. blowback if people yeah. disagree with me removing a comment, disagree with me removing them from the group. It just doesn't serve me. So I said years ago, I was like, people want to contact me. 
they can go through the email address which is mm -hmm. readily available um, or message the Facebook, the GGC Facebook page mm -hmm. um, because I kind of feel as though that adds an element of professionalism which will hopefully stop somebody from coming at me yeah it's another thought it's it's another thought in the whole process for somebody that wants to do something like that and it's usually a certain type of person anyway but the more barriers you put in place the less likely it is actually going to come through so if they've then got to come and go well it's an email address can i be bothered yeah doing an email well, and whatever is it. it is it's that whole prevention as much as you can and i totally agree with that um, yeah and and do you know what if somebody emails me with a disagreement that's absolutely fine we'll have a conversation some nine times out of ten i'll have a phone conversation with somebody and be like this was the reason and we'll chat it through and then it's totally sorted mm -hmm. um but those are the people that you know are like probably more they're less likely to be the shouting and, and giving the yeah. abuse they're yeah, more like an email. they're more mm -hmm. likely to be like can i try and understand this and of course you can try and understand it because mm -hmm. i want it to be a fair space and you deserve to know but that is my boundary if you want to chat about it go mm -hmm. through the cleaner and i've seen you keeping a post up but then restricting the comments because it's just getting out of hand like somebody was complaining about cats so that gets my back up right away because i want my cat <laughs> he's at home doing the crossword now so oh, you know, love i that. love my cat and um, so i was like so i saw some of the comments that were on that but i also saw and i was so glad to see it that you restricted the comments it was like my god and it's exactly what you're saying it's that behavior breeds that behavior so you will keep some posts up as well and just yeah we used to remove we the rule used to be if an original post causes any type of confrontation we remove the original post because then mm -hmm. it just removes it but more recently if the post if the original posts are bless them the intention is not yes. for confrontation uh -huh. mm -hmm. but confrontation mm -hmm. is a part of it we'll try and remove as many comments as we can and switch off the comment on the post because then the person's got the help the stuff you know the, the support's still there but we just don't want we don't want and sometimes as well if, see if people are having a bad day they might not even be a troll they're just having a bad day they're in the group they see something and they see people arguing and they jump in and it's just it's maybe more human nature so we just want to give people the opportunity like to don't get involved don't, aye, don't get involved aye, in that let's aye. just like Move let's on move on let's right. move on um i'll tell you about the post that i did then because <laughs> everything's allowed and it's just you know it can be there'll be, be loads of different things chat and whatever but it was one day i wasn't i didn't really do instagram at the time i was a totally at despair at my wits end maw this day i yep. was out doing the school jacket shopping and lola i think it was she was just had come out of primary one and was going into primary two if my memory serves me correctly like, if not it was two to three and we were doing the school jacket shopping and I, we had been like all over glasgow <laughs> and she was getting to that age where <clears throat> she was trying things on didn't like it was being really vocal about that and like <laughs> acting like a teenager when she was six you know my whole life has been like that and i was at my absolute wits end and we'd come down we'd parked up at buchanan galleries we'd come down buchanan street been in all the shops that you know were p potential uh potentials for a new jacket then turned to come along argyle street and stopped at the lights where next used to be it's okay. not next now but you know where i mean yes, on argyle I know. Street. yeah and waiting on the green man and she looked up at the lamp post and the sticker on the lamp post <laughs> said you know she just learned to read in that and so <laughs> she went what does that mean mum <laughs> boris johnson is a fanny <laughs> So I was at my wits end and like came to that, the lights and then she said that not knowing at all, like I just learned to read, was reading it I and I was just, oh my God, how to diffuse a situation as, you know, I almost have got stories like that, but I came onto the Facebook page and I was like giving the whole story and obviously it got a massive reaction yeah. because of must no, could totally relate to that but that's just a wee funny story as to you know how that. diverse the yeah. page is but how, there's ma there's so much magic in sharing a story <laughs> like that because actually again if someone's having a bad day they read that and they laugh uh, some of the posts uh, you read i remember that i remember howling <laughs> 
and there's so many posts that I just actually I'm howling at. I'm oh. just like, that is amazing. That is genius. I know. And it's it is just sharing it. It's the community thing. And it, you know, it wasn't as if nobody else had heard it either. We were standing at the lights. It's always busy there. People <laughs> waiting to cross. You know, it wasn't it just that she had said it. It was the fact that everybody heard it as well. I love know? it. And she's read um, it so well. So we want to give her the credit. <laughs> But equally, you're like, shh. <laughs> <laughs> sure, um, but anyway, that, that is how good the community is, that you can share anything you want. What would you say has been, and it's not talk, no talking about trolling or negative comments or anything like that, you as a person creating that page, what has been your biggest personal challenge? And running with it, and even now having it yeah. as a business, you know, yeah. what's been your biggest I would definitely say my biggest uh, challenge is me, my mindset. Really? Yeah, definitely. Like, when we were talking about, like, the whole continuous work thing, like, I my, I hold myself back from so much because you know how you go through different periods of life? Like, after I had Bella Rose, my wee girl's now three, three-nager. Right. We haven't even, we've not even mentioned three oh, Bella no, Rose. She's, she's a crazy, <laughs> she's brilliant. She's, she's a real... She's my mum. Is she like you? My mum says, nature? yeah, my mum, um, yeah. Oh, she definitely is. She's definitely got a lot of her, her dad in her as well, but she's she's a really strong wee girl. And she's mm -hmm. very spirited, and I think she's she's going to make waves. If I can just nurture that spirit and not <laughs> try to hide from it, right, because she's right. like <laughs> slamming doors. and But no, she's a strong, she's a strong girl. So um, after having her, I completely lost my identity. And I know that that's a shared experience with a lot of women. Um, and I lost my identity with the community, with the business. Really? Yeah, I didn't know everything. That. Mm -hmm. Because when I had Bella Rose, um, nine weeks later we went into lockdown. Mm -hmm. So it was a really challenging time for a lot of business owners. I mean, a lot of businesses thrived, which was brilliant. Um, but for for a lot of business owners, we were just like, what the actual like what do we do mm. especially and we were the same I, like, you're yeah, just I like, you'd be the same with we as well the, in the house uh, that's and, your bread and butter but worried about money mm -hmm. worried about everything um and just worried about how your business is going to go so i think there was a combination of becoming a new mum and covid and lockdown and the fear and everything and i was just like i don't know if i can do this anymore i don't know i stopped going live I stopped um, accepting lovely opportunities like this to come and speak to people. I just, I don't know, I just kind of, I, I went into myself a wee bit. Um, so for me, Did mindset, you have a wee bit of postnatal, do you think, or not? Do you just think it was the I don't whole? know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can honestly say I don't know because we were, see, because we weren't do? going out and we weren't mm -hmm. allowed to see doctors. And, and actually there was lots of positives and negatives, so... My husband got to spend all that time with Bella Rose and he would have only had maybe three weeks. And so there was, I, I like to always try and see the positive. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard, but mm -hmm. I like to always try. So I don't know if I did or not. That's the honest truth. Um, but I feel like now I, I'm really, I'm like, this is the time to get out your shell and stop. I, I've got, I, I'm probably, see when people talk about introverts or ambiverts, mm -hmm. or ambiverts, introverts, extroverts. I would probably say I'm an ambivert, which is the in the middle. Mm -hmm. Now, an extrovert and an introvert are probably like, oh, shut up. You're just like an extrovert that likes quiet time or you're just an <laughs> introvert mm -hmm. who's sociable because mm -hmm. not all introverts are shy. But I definitely get energy from being alone mm -hmm. as well as being out in public and chatting mm -hmm. to people. So I think for me, getting to know myself has been really the powerful thing. but you're saying your biggest challenge was that period after covid how long did you sit with that for before you kind of did anything or pushed yourself out yet i would probably say after having bella rose so i went back to work after six months it wasn't i wasn't doing like full time full time or anything like that i was just doing the odd wee hour or the odd wee day but i did kind of start to try and get back into the working mindset but i would genuinely say it's taken me to probably maybe end of last year this year to really be like Laura go for it mm -hmm. stop holding yourself back mm -hmm. because everyone has got the capability of holding themselves back mm -hmm. but like I said when we first started chatting for me learning so see podcasts mm -hmm. listening to podcasts or watching your show and, and learning about other people's stories and 
learning about how other humans deal with things. Mm -hmm. I think it's like there's a, such a magic to it. Yeah, so, yeah. so I think I always like to talk about how you level up your time. So see if you're driving, if you're in the shower, if you're walking your dog, whatever you're doing. I like to like listen to a wee podcast that gives me a wee nugget. Mm -hmm. And then I think, to, and then I feel like I'm, I'm building upon myself. So as I grow as a person, I'm seeing my business growing. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing the community growing. So it's 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 quite linked mm -hmm. to how you uh, are as yeah, a person. Yeah, oh, totally. Your attitude drives it. Well, I totally agree with that. And the imposter syndrome, I, I want to ask you about that because we touched on that. Cause yeah. I feel, and it's not exclusive to women, obviously, but I always say I'm a woman. I can only speak for women's experience. I feel, and women that I've come across, that's one of your biggest things. In a, world, in a world that is predominantly um, driven, and it's factual, the statistics prove it, I um, know. by men. I don't know if that's a reason. But anyway, ultimately, it's down to you. It's down to you and how you position yourself. But I've always struggled with that. Yeah, imposter syndrome, and I see it a lot. We talk about it a lot in the membership with the business members as well, because it can really affect... Um, you know, a woman's progression with our goals and business and and your personal life as well if you've got mm -hmm. imposter syndrome. So, yes, for me, I would definitely say it's something that I do have to constantly work on. But actually, there's a business member, Kat Patterson, who's got an amazing, really refreshing and different view on imposter syndrome. Oh, um, tell us. Because, you know, she, she says about why... Because it is largely women that talk about imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. I... You rarely come across men talking about it. And don't no, get me wrong. I don't know if I've ever heard a man talk yeah, about it. There will be, there will but be. I've just never... But what, you know, what she says is, like, it's almost like, again, something that's maybe been told to women that we've got mm -hmm. to kind of almost hold us back a wee bit. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when you talk about things like the patriarchy and stuff, you know, whether you're, you know, whatever you believe about it, it's almost as if another thing that's been created, that women have got a syndrome that actually holds them back so then you can put a term to it so then you you buy into it more almost mm -hmm. whereas rather than focusing on imposter syndrome let's focus on self-belief and mm -hmm. actually backing ourselves a bit more and appreciating our worth knowing our value and so you know, when i spoke to her about it last week actually on international women's day um when we were recording this one, so that was last week. Right. And um, I thought to myself, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that because actually we do, we do talk about it and we do because we feel it. But where does this come from? Where has this feeling of imposter syndrome? I do syndrome? think it's cultural. Yes. I do think it's exactly what she's saying. You're, yep. you're born into a world that's dominated um, by men. So you're automatically subdominant. Is that the right word? Yeah. You know, yep. you're, you're below you're below that and I know from my upbringing that that was very much where women were in society so it's not even that somebody's told you or that yeah. you've had a conscious thought you're you're born into that culture yeah, you're absorbed absolutely. in it constantly and I don't know if that is for me what has made me think oh I'm not good enough or if it's more than that do you know what I mean? Like, I you know. could probably yeah, really you could dig in. Yeah, it, you? Aye, yeah. What I mean. But you're absolutely right because we were all born into, like, you know, things are changing now, thank goodness. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I would say that there is societal change, but it's down to all of us to make that happen. Yeah. And I'm not just meaning, like, women flying the flag, like, men are our allies. Like, humans mm -hmm. should be allied to each other, regardless mm -hmm. of gender race you know anything mm -hmm. like whatever that box. whatever mm -hmm. box you, that you tick for yourself we should all be equal mm -hmm. that that's like i mean so we but we weren't born into a world where that was where the truth uh -huh. so and it's still as you say in the statistics and the number of like m male directors and you know all the all the facts of the world women are still you know we're still not getting equal pay yeah no no and, and that's just the stuff that affects this country really yeah, yeah. when you look at other countries where it's, you know women don't even get to drive cars or things like night and day. that similar i know it's yeah so we're actually quite advanced yeah. compared to other countries in the world but you're right everybody has got a responsibility a responsibility to drive that equality forward 
as much as they, they possibly can because not everybody can put their head above the parapet either no. so it's just doing whatever you can yeah to drive to it forward it. and that is the fundamental basis of the ggc for me is to try and allow women to realize their worth realize how good they are mm -hmm. in society and feel more confident and feel more like they can go out and take on whatever challenge they've got and and you know that'll hopefully help with equality drive that equality forward we are not below nobody's above mm -hmm. nobody's mm -hmm. below mm -hmm. we're all here mm -hmm. but because you know certain groups of people are told that they're not Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like we all need to rise. We all rise yeah. together. You kind of just take the position. Yeah, that's right. But it's about break that rising. glass ceiling. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, and it's worth saying as well that your page does do a lot for a uh, mindset for women and stuff. You know, so I always see posts about that or people doing courses or whatever. So it's good to see that. And the final thing I want to ask you then, just before we finish, is. What are you saying? You're, you've started pushing yourself more, pushing yourself out there and whatever. What are Laura's goals <laughs> for 2023? I'm putting you right on the spot. That's you don't need question. to give us. You don't need to give us specific. No, no, but that's, you a must good, that's a good question. Um, no, so. Um, this year specifically, I'm going to bring back the Glasgow Girls Club podcast. We were talking about oh, that yes. before, uh -huh. so I'm bringing that back with my good friend Victoria mm -hmm. Halliday, who's been in who's the car. Been in the car. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to bring that back. Vic and I have always spoke about like um getting our own like space in Glasgow, like creative space. Mm -hmm. And from the GGC perspective, I really want a membership hub. So the dream would be to have like, and it might not be this year, but driving that start goal this forward, year, yes. um, to have a, a membership space in Glasgow to just welcome, um, you know, events, welcome co-working, welcome all the magical stuff that happens mm -hmm. when women are together, uh, and also. I would love to ultimately get to the point where I could franchise my business model mm -hmm. because I get lots of messages from uh, women from cities around Scotland but out with as well saying, you know, I really like what you're doing. Would you bring it to X, Y and Z? So for me, I really think that you need to have the person on the ground. Mm -hmm. So say I was to have a, a, a glow club um, for example, a Leeds or a Glow right. Club, Manchester uh -huh. or anything like that. The Manchester Girls Glow Club. Yeah, mm -hmm. you would need mm -hmm. to have. So you would need to have somebody who's. So I can't speak for, like the culture. I can't speak for. Right. So um, for me, I'm like, if I could, if I could package this up, give it a blueprint or a pink print, as mm -hmm. I like to say, <laughs> and then just say to a, a woman, you know, here's here's a business. Go for it, model, and, and it's a business yours. model is uh -huh. yours. But take a franchise. Mm -hmm. So that's the, they're the they're the kind of big goals. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm not sure when they'll happen, but I, I'm starting to move the, the mindset towards that. Uh, that's amazing. That's the stuff you've got in mind. Uh, incredible. I never thought of that, but you're right. That's an amazing idea. Just if somebody and there will be with the same passion as you about the local city wants to do it. Then they'd be able to do it. Yeah. Get in touch with you. Yeah, That's absolutely. Incredible. Well, thank you so much. I'm so, I'm so, <laughs> Are you okay? A wee red face from <laughs> all of it. It's actually quite warm. I don't think you have. The snow's just started as well, so we better just wrap this up and get back <laughs> up the road before we're snowed in the car park. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks again, my lovely. Thank speak you. to you soon. Bye. Bye.